At InDigital, we know that public safety professionals hold themselves to a high standard. In fact, standard doesn't do it justice. In over 25 years working alongside you, carrying millions of calls over our IP networks, your dedication has inspired us. That's why our ESI net goes beyond industry standards, not only I3 compliant, but designed to adapt to future development for a network you can count on when it matters most. Learn more at indigital.net. Here in Greenville County, we have eight different places where a 911 call can be answered. It is the largest county in South Carolina. It's a challenge. The type of information that a telecommunicator gets from Radius Plus is location-based technology. You can see where the caller is, if they have a medical issue, if they speak a different language. They're immediately able to text to that caller in their native language. It reduces response times because it immediately gets first responders where they need to be. If Within the Trenches has ever taught you something, open your eyes to what it is like to be a 9-1 dispatcher, or has inspired you to become one, then help support us and join our Patreon. Get exclusive bonus content, one-of-a-kind swag, discounts on merchandise, ad-free early access to new episodes, and much more. To join, please visit patreon.com slash WTT podcast. And if you're an industry partner, we have something for you as well. And now for the show. This is Jordan, and you're listening to the Code 7 Podcast Network. Warning. This episode contains the three A's of podcasting. Adult content, adult language, and awesomeness. You've been warned. Welcome to Within the Trenches, true stories from the 911 dispatchers who live there. Hey, what's going on? This is Ricardo with the Codes of a Podcast Network, and this is going to be an epic episode 400. That's right, 400. 400 episodes of Within the Trenches. How crazy is that? <laughs> oh, man. It's just, it's amazing. When I, when I first started all of this, I, man, I didn't know that we would be where we're at right now. And it has just been an amazing experience. And I have all of you to thank for that, because if it wasn't for your support and you coming on and wanting to share your stories with me, this wouldn't be what it is. So thank you, all of you for the job that you do, for the support and for the trust in handling your amazing stories. <sighs> I can't say it enough. Thank you. So this episode is going to be open mic. This was recorded live at the 2021 Nina conference in Columbus, Ohio. It was a packed full on room and we had finished story after story after story I am 911 style during Imagine Listening, an emotionally intense but powerful session, 30 minutes doing all of those. And then the last half of Imagine Listening, which is what you're about to listen to, open mic, is where we get together and we just end up sharing the lighter side of dispatch. Because with this session, Imagine Listening, I don't I don't ever want people to leave from their you know, down, like I want them to feel good. One, for sharing their story to begin with, for Imagine Listening. But by the time we're done with that portion of it, you want to laugh. We, we're, we're ready to laugh and, and heal, you know, together through laughter, humor. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an excellent time to be in there with everyone and, and the stories are just, from everywhere it's like whoa <laughs> there's they're just so funny and uh you know as always you know it's the situation that uh you know that we're that we're joking about it's it's never about the callers we are professionals but if we didn't have some sort of humor in the job that we do we would burn out faster than people do 
and we probably wouldn't make it. We'd be crying more than anything else. So it's the situation that, uh, you know, we're joking about here because some of this shit you just can't make up. And when you hear about it, you, you think that you've heard the funniest, craziest, or most outrageous call, and then another one gets dropped, and you just think, wow, that really happens. <laughs> so that's what we're about to get into right now. And uh, without further ado, here's an epic episode 400 of Within the Trenches podcast. But this one features stories from Open Mic during an Imagine Listening session at the 2021 Nina Conference. All right. We are currently live right now at the 2021 Nina Conference, and we're here for Imagine Listening. We're about to start Open Mic, and I'm going to do the intro here. This is Jordan, and you're listening to the Code 7 Podcast Network. Warning, this episode contains the three A's of podcasting. And dropping the bass. Adult content, adult language, and awesomeness. You've been warned. There is no one over here to cook our lunch. Welcome to Open Mic, where we visit the lighter side of dispatch, because laughing <clears throat> is good medicine. <laughs> I love that intro, and a friend of mine who hooked me up with that, that I was able to make the intro, is sitting right in back. Thank you very much for that, because that is an, an excellent intro there. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah, hey, let's hear it. You can hear that as well, yes. So, <laughs> I know, right? Yes. So, we are about to get started here with Open Mic Live. Uh, welcome. My name is Ricardo Martinez with the Code 7 Podcast Network. And uh, this is going to be within the trenches podcast, but this is going to be Open Mic Live. We just finished doing um, Imagine Listening. We, we shared some powerful stories, but now we are going to share the lighter side of Dispatch, the funny shit that you, know, you hear about on late night television, radio, whichever. These are the stories that we're going to be talking about. And for those who are watching here live right now, I have a live audience with me. Let's hear it. And this is an epic episode 400. So we're about to get started. This is going to be amazing. And I wish you could all be here with us, but we're about to get started. Have a good one. <laughs> they get just a little teaser. They'll hear the rest of it later on. So who has... A funny story they would like to share. Oh, shit. Here we go. All right. <laughs> now, I have to say, it only takes one story for it to go downhill. So here we go. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so I got a call from an elderly male about one o'clock in the morning. And he was so calm talking to me. And he was like, everybody's dead. And I was like, Huh? <laughs> and he's like, everybody's dead in my house. My wife is dead. My son's dead. Everybody's dead. And I was like, oh, Lord. OK. So we start getting help that way and everything. And then all of a sudden I hear a faint voice in the background like, honey, who are you talking to? And I was like, sir, who is that? He's like, oh, that's my wife. Oh, well, I guess she's not dead. <laughs> and he calls in every now and then to say that she's dead because she's sleeping. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, right here. All right. Hi. So I took a call from a female who had just gotten home from work and her husband or boyfriend was at home and she was calling for an ambulance and said she needed an ambulance to go through the questions. You know, who was it for? It's for him. What's going on with him? The typical, well, he's bleeding. Okay. Where is he bleeding from? Um, from, um, well, he's bleeding from his penis. Okay, what's going on with him? How, you know, why, you know, how long, how much blood has he lost? You know, the typical questions. And then I hear kind of like arguing, but not really giving a whole lot of information. I said, what, you know, ma'am, what's going on? Is, you know, everything okay? Well, he put a skewer down his penis. And I said, what? You know, I'm like, how long has he been bleeding for? I don't know. I've been at work. And he's in the background saying, 
it's been going on for hours now. It, to this day, I don't have any clue how or why <laughs> he put a skewer, like a shish kebab skewer, down his penis. And no idea. <laughs> so there's that. I, I, you know, I guess you know, sometimes maybe we don't want closure. You know, that's, that's something that we deal with, right? I don't, I don't know. Okay, we got this one. Let's go back there. Okay, so this guy calls in and um, says his girlfriend is not breathing. So, you know, we go through the steps. We're giving him CPR instructions. You can hear him uh, working the girlfriend, you know, doing his CPR. Ambulance gets there. She is a two by four. He is completely strung out on something and he is literally giving CPR to a two by four. Yeah, yeah, it was it was terrible. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> Let's see, hold on. There was who else was up here in the front? Okay, uh, well, I'll work over to you. I'll go here and I'm gonna run. <laughs> so everybody has their frequent flyers. So we have one that on any given day she can call 30, 40 times, and she just rambles. There's no stopping her. She gets going and you just, okay. She talks about the people on the hair on and uh, every, everything under the, word, under the sun. But we actually had a quote of hers up on our board because we don't, we don't even know where it came from. But her quote, and my partner's me, I'm going to imitate her voice because it's signature. She says, you don't know nothing about them big bird unless Mary Poppins pops him. <laughs> and she hung up. Hi, yo. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Here and then who else? So it was early in my career, and I wanted to get a save. So I answered 911, and I was dispatching for medical that day. And this woman is frantic. And I'll age myself. It was really before cell phones came out. Um, so she was on a cordless phone and all I could pick up from her was, he's not breathing. He's not breathing. All right. Apparently this was out in the backyard. So I dispatch a squad. I'm excited. I'm trying to, ma'am, I need you to listen to me. I need you to check for breathing. I need you to start CPR. And she is cutting in and out. And she goes, wait a minute, you want me to what? Ma'am, I can help you save him. I need you to focus. Bring it in. I need you to get down, put the phone on speaker, and we're going to start with rescue breath. And then we're going to go to chest compressions. And she stopped and she said, on a raccoon? <laughs> Ma'am, just chuck it over the cliff. <laughs> okay. We had a been to our state. He was from California. Sorry, everybody from California. And he was arrested for DUI during the night. I came in day shift. And his son called from California and he said, dad's in jail. Uh, what's his bond? And I said, well, just a moment, I'll put you on hold and I'll go check the bond. Come back onto the phone and he's screaming at me. You guys in Montana are sick. You guys are just sick. I don't know why you think you can do that. You guys are sick. So I'm sorry. What, what, well, while he was on hold, he was listening to the local country station and the song on was you're in the jailhouse now. <laughs> yes. Oh, that is great. All right, here you go. Okay, so this one just happened the other day, and they told me that I had to come and tell it at the conference. So 
we had a guy call in like 7 a.m. in the morning. He's making threats. He's going to go shoot up all these different places. You can hear the gun racking in the background. We're getting hostage neg- or like negotiators down to 911 with us because he's he knows our dispatcher by name, and it's a little scary. So we've got all kinds of people down there. We go on the phone with him for a couple hours. He's just rambling and won't let us interrupt him, won't let us ask questions. He's uh, talking about uh, bunnies and rats in a pet store and that he wants to cut off his half of his body and be put in a bunny suit, be fed to a snake. This just goes on and on and on. And he keeps hanging up. And one of our other dispatchers who hadn't really dealt with him yet answers the phone. And the crisis negotiator guy, he's and he's part of our CID, was behind her and kind of coaching her on what to say. And so he starts talking about feet. And starts talking about pedicures. And he asked if she's ever had pedicures. And she said, yeah. And he said, well, what's your favorite part of it? And she's just trying to keep him on the line because we can't ping him. He's on like one of those text now apps and you can't trace it. So she's just trying to keep him on the line while they're, you know, researching all this stuff. And she said, I like the lotion part. And you can imagine where that went. And so he says, oh, something just came out of my penis. And (laughs) I'm sorry. But <laughs> so he hangs up the phone and <laughs> the negotiators in the background just shaking his head. And he's like, I told you not to go down that route. <laughs> like as soon as he started talking about feet, he was like, no, 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 no. Don't go there. So I gave her a pen and put a sticker on it that said this shit could get worse. And <laughs> I, I wrote her a note that said, I'm sorry, a guy ejaculated on the phone with you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Here you go. (laughs) So I dispatched a call in our beach town for Avatar and Winnie the Pooh shooting fireworks from a bus station and starting our dune grass on fire. And my officers get on scene and they talk to Avatar and Winnie the Pooh and they clear and tell me that Tigger has taken off. And they're going to go try and find him so they can tell him he can't shoot off any more fireworks. And he checks out with Tigger and Eeyore in the middle of town. And he clears. And I told him, are we clear or are we still looking for friends from the Thousand Acre Woods? (laughs) And he told me, all the friends at the Thousand Acre Woods have promised they're not going to start the dune grass on fire anymore. And I've taken away their fireworks. All right. You know oh, all right, we have two over here. I apologize to follow up with another penis story. Um, <laughs> I, I dispatched for some very rural areas and the cell phone connection was not very good. So it took me about two and a half minutes to actually get the address. So I'm going, I'm like, okay, tell me exactly what happened. S- static, it exploded. I'm like, what exploded? I'm like, oh, this could be exciting. His penis. I'm like, come again. Like, <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> that was my best line. But they were playing with the penis pump and something happened. And it was a whole day of information coming from this rural fire department of actually what happened. At one point in the phone call, the lady's like, honey, your balls are on top of your shaft. And it was just like, just, and it was like a 15 minute, I stayed on the phone with them because whatever, it was day shift, and there were not a lot of calls coming in. And I I do have the recording stuck in my, like, file of, this is one of the best calls ever, so. (laughs) Thank you for sharing. I might have to FOIA that. Uh. (laughs) So, mine's from a couple months ago, and during COVID, we were separated between two centers, and our Mevo phones were actually receiving calls from an agency that was six hours south of us and they could not get them corrected. So the line goes off, I answer it and it's a lady in the background just flipping out. And I said, tell me exactly what happened. And she said, well, my boyfriend and I were shooting up heroin and we've also been drinking and he went to the bathroom and never came back. And I'm like, Oh, great. Cause you, we could not transfer the lines. So one of my other dispatchers calls the agency, gets them started. So I start doing CPR and, you can hear her wheezing. She goes, 
Just so you know, I have COPD. I'm like, shit, we're going to lose both of them because what are we going to do? So she continues to do CPR. It's 37 minutes because they have to page out everybody to respond. So for 37 minutes, I'm doing CPR on a phone for this lady. And all of a sudden in the background, the other agency said our dispatch or our sheriff's a minute away. I'm like, they should be coming. And I could hear a male talking in the background. And I said, who is that? And so she yells this guy's name and he's like, she's like, you've been dead for an hour. And I'm like, is that him? Is he alive? Wait, hold on. So next thing I know, a guy's on the phone. He goes, she just overreacts sometime. I'm like, uh, hello, is that you? So he kept going. No, I wasn't dead. No, dude. Yeah. You, agonal breathing. We were pumping you non to the point that I'm like, check his breathing. Cause I thought she was going to die on the phone. And she's like, well, he goes, well, I'm fine. Okay. Then the medics got there, but 37 minutes. <laughs> Did that one? Okay. So I got a call one time from a medical alarm company of all places. Person, not old enough that you would think they would have life alert, but young enough that why do you have this? They said that they needed to have fire department go out because he was stuck. Okay, how's he stuck? Well, he's stuck in the tub. Okay, we're getting somewhere. How is he stuck in the tub? Well, you know that part with the little bar you put a washcloth on? Okay, go on. He's got his penis stuck between the wall and that bar. Okay, you have my attention. Go on. So I send out deputies because they're curious at this point. I have deputies from the back take a CCAD calling up. Is this call real? Is this for real? They go out there, they free him. He's a patient, refused to want to go to the hospital. Uh, tried to get after him. I was like, why? How did he do it? I have so many questions. Like, he didn't want to talk about it. We freed him. We left. To this day, I still have so many questions. Like, how? What was you doing? I don't understand how this happened. <laughs> so, you know, we, we always talk about how when we're taking calls, sometimes what we're piecing together in our head is worse than what's there, but I don't know about this one. Like... <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> All right. I went over here. All right. So we had enough penis stories. Let's go with the, the other side. The other, the, the, other gen, the other gender. So we had, uh, this is a partner. She's uh, since moved on. But she took a call from a gentleman and... Uh, his, girl, his wife or girlfriend was having issues and he was trying not to say it or didn't know how to say it. So he kept saying that his, her lower abdomen was hurting. And our dispatcher was like, sir, I need more information on that. What do you mean by that? And he was like, you know, her lower abdomen. And he's like, no, really, we need to, we, I need to understand what's going on so I can try to help you. Where does she hurt? Where's the pain? Well, you know, down there. Down where, sir? Her coach hurts. <laughs> And that's all the time we have, folks. Uh, <laughs> all right. I love this portion of this. This is so much fun. Is there, are there any other story? Okay. I said you would take one story for them to go into the genitals and stuff. So. <laughs> So since we're there, we might as well just hang out and, and see what happens. <laughs> so a coworker of mine um, got a, a call. You know, everybody dreams of delivering a baby, and that's going to be like your highlight of your career. Well, see, so she gets this call, and she's delivering this baby. She goes through the entire protocol. Everything's great. She's got this baby out. And at the end, she's like, okay, now we need to get the baby. And she's like, what well, baby? What baby? Where's Where's the baby? So my coworker literally says, what did you do to the baby? She's like, I put it in the bathtub. And so by, by this time, like we've delivered this baby. So it's not been very long, but our responders get there and find out that this lady is um, delusional and there is no baby. We've delivered an imaginary baby and there, we can't find it anywhere. So there literally is no signs or anything of baby. So we, anytime we take a fun call, it's always, did you deliver your imaginary baby today? <laughs> I 
That would freak me out. All right. And oh, okay, here we go. So we have this guy that used to live. He just recently moved out of our one of our jurisdictions, and he used to call seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. Never nine one one, just the non emergency line. Hey, it's me. What do you got going on today, bud? And he would get calls from God on his God phone. And he calls in, it's the middle of the night, two, three in the morning. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm outside drinking and I hear some weird noise. You got to send somebody over. I'm like, okay, what kind of noise? It sounds like a real big animal. I think, I think they're stuck. You got to send somebody over here. It sounds bad. What do you mean a big animal? You know, like a, a chihuahua or something. <laughs> Those ankle biters, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so like everyone, we have a frequent flyer and her name is Katie. And I won't leave, I won't tell you the rest of her name, but I've probably taken, I don't know, a dozen phone calls from her. And she lives in our area where we get our uniform shirts embroidered. And so one day I was on my way out of town and was dropping some stuff off. I had my kids with me and I come outside and this girl is opening the door to my car where my, my kids are in there. And I was like, holy shit, get away from my car. And the embroiderer was like, Katie, get away from her car. And I was like, Katie, it's Katie. Like, Katie, Katie. <laughs> so needless to say, I met our frequent flyer and um, she is just as crazy as she sounds on the phone. <laughs> so, but then we left town and I told my kids, I was like, it's fine. She's just sick. And they were like, she has COVID. And I'm like, she doesn't have COVID. <laughs> she's, she's sick and drugs and all that, but we can't have that conversation because you're only seven and eight. So <laughs> yeah, meeting your frequent flyers is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it's uh, you know, a save, right? You meet the, the, the person that ends up getting saved or the parent, the baby that you deliver. And this was, this is different. That's awesome. Well done. You can notch that one right there. Achievement. <laughs> So we've got just a few more minutes left of this episode. Does anyone have another story or, all right, here we go. I would say, otherwise I can, I can end with a story, but it's probably a story that everyone has heard already. Okay. Of course, everybody's got your frequent flyer. I'll call him Johnny. So Johnny, when he's not incarcerated, he is out, he, Unfortunately, he suffers from mental illness and does not want to take his medication. But he also, at some point in his life, experienced, I guess there's a way they prepare methamphetamine that involves the use of wasp spray. So that's caused a lot of his issues. Anyway, he calls one morning and I'm going to get a little graphic. He's like, the motherfuckers at the Social Security office ain't sending me my damn check. And so he's going on and on and, you know, I'm like, Johnny, it's okay. You know, we'll get help. In the meantime, the social security office is calling like the main 1-800, like there's shit going down at the social security office saying, Hey, we've got this guy that called. He's saying he's coming down here to kill all of us. And I'm like, great. So I'm like, Johnny, listen, I was like, don't, we're not going to do that. He's like, I'm going to go fucking kill him. And I'm like, no, you're not going to go down to the government building, you know, and do all that. And he's like, Hey, he's like, what's your name? And I'm like, ooh. Mm. So I said, operator 34. And he's like, okay, can I call you Amanda? I'm like, sure. He's like, okay, Amanda. So the other problem is I can't get my Marlboro Reds or my Sundrop without my check. And my mom's got that poison Mountain Dew in the fridge. <laughs> so we just kept talking to him. And finally they got there and no one at the Social Security office was harmed. But he is now, I think, banned from all of them in Tennessee I don't know what he's going to do to get his money, but um, I tried to convince him on the phone to like, hey, maybe you need to take your medicine because, you know, this is not working for us. But um, so now the joke, my other name at work is Amanda, you know, so. <laughs> Thank you so much to uh, to everyone for for sharing your stories, for being here together. Um, once we once we end this here. I've got some uh, I am nine one bracelets. If you want to come up, you can snag one, um, one per person, please, because I, I want to make sure I have enough for everyone. Um, so we got about a minute left here. Um, how many of you have heard the uh, Red Bull Red Bomb story? Just a few of you. Okay. All right. Let me tell this. I'm going to try to tell this fast. So 
uh, and, and we'll, we'll end it with this. And I saw a few people smile already because they know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'll just hold it. All right. So <clears throat> this is a story about me and uh, some shit literally that happened to me when I was in dispatch. So I was working from uh, 1A to 5A on a Wednesday. We had three twelves and a four hour. And this one, I was going in for the midnight shift. I had taken my nap, but, you know, we got to stay awake somehow, right? So I go to the gas station and I stopped there and I was kind of hungry as well. I was like, ah, what am I going to get to eat? What should I get? So I get a gas station burrito. It was called the Red Bomb. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and a 12-ounce Red Bull is what I got. So I go into dispatch, and I go early so I can warm this mofo up so I can eat it because I'm hungry. And uh, I thought I was going to be on backup, but I'm on phones. So I was like, oh, it'll be fine. You know, it'll go, it'll go quick. So, <laughs> yeah, remember what I said there. It'll go quick. Um, so I'm on, I'm on phones. I destroy this burrito. And, oh, my God, was it amazing. Not the type of amazing that I was thinking it was going to be. I also chugged that Red Bull. Get a phone call. comes in. And it's a pursuit from the county south of us. They're like, we're about to go into your, uh, your county. So I'm putting in the information on the lookout and stuff. And, oh, like I start feeling like a little bubble gut, you know? <laughs> It's just like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, God, no. Really? At this moment, this is an important call, and my stomach is talking to me right now? So I'm kind of freaking out because it's like, you know, kind of moving up to my back. You know, you're getting like back farts and stuff. And, and I'm sweating at this point. This is horrible. I'm sweating to the point that if anybody was over there, they could probably smell me, probably smell like beef or something. <laughs> It was bad. And I'm taking this phone call, right? And I had sent a message to my partners and I said, if I have to get up and take off, please, please take this call. And sure enough, I did. And I hauled ass running like you could see the smoke. <laughs> Hopefully it was smoke, right? <laughs> now, I don't know about your dispatch center, but my old dispatch center, they have a bathroom inside, right? I wasn't about to drop heat there. And then down the hall, We've got a locker room and bathrooms there. So I haul ass, go do my thing, come back. And they're like, you all right, man? I was like, yeah, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I sit down and get back on the line. And uh, we're, we're going through the call still. Because the car kept turning around and going and coming back. So I'm on the line. It's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> not just the person, but I start bubbling again. I was like, what the hell? You got to be kidding me right now. Now, you know, in, in movies, sequels, they're the worst, right? Yeah. Well, in the shit world, it's the same. Okay. You got these bubble guts coming. Up. Oh, back farts, everything. I put them on hold and I stand up and I'm like, I got to go down the hall. And one of the, one of my partners goes, you got to poop. I was like, what dude? Why? It's not a warrant. You don't have to confirm it. Like, <laughs> dude. So, so I take off, go do my thing, come back. No one's on the line anymore. I'm like, oh, this is good. This, I'm going to be fine. I sit down, you know, just wiping the sweat. And I'm like, I can't believe this is happening in dispatch. What the hell? Phone again. This freaking guy, they still haven't caught him. Like, drop your stop sticks. I'm going through my own shit right now, okay? <laughs> like, so... <laughs> They're coming back in my trilogy of poo here now. Yeah, I, there was no way I was going to make it down the hallway because my stomach started gurgling again. And I put them on hold. Of, I'm sorry. I'm going to go right here. And they looked at me and I was like, not right here. I'm not going to go right here. I'm going to go into the bathroom. So I go into the bathroom. I turn on the, uh, the fan. I turn on the water. Anything that I can do to mask the war I'm about to go into. Because if you've ever seen Dumb and Dumber, mm, that's what I was about to do. I was about to scream. <laughs> so I go to the bathroom. Because <laughs> before, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, come on, let's stay together. Stay together so I can get over there. I do my thing. I come out. They're like, man, are you all right? I was like, screw you guys. Like, I'm going to turn the heat up so you can smell what was in there. <laughs> 
So years later, I go on a family vacation and I'm in Montana. We stop to get gas and I'm walking in and I like twitch a little bit. <laughs> I was like, what the hell was that? And I turn around, there's a cooler of Red Bomb burritos next to a kiosk of Red Bull. And all I could think was, screw you, Montana. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> so I want to thank you, all of you, for being here for this epic episode 400 and for sharing your stories. The job you do is a hard one. It's a stressful one. Not many people can do it, but you can. Be there for each other. If you are, are hurting, you have a story to share, do it. Share your story. Broadcast your message. Keep doing it. Thank you for being the most vital piece of public safety. And there you have it. <laughs> Episode 400 of Within the Trenches podcast. I have, I think, five more episodes already on deck to be going to go out as well. But I wanted to save this open mic session from Imagine Listening at the 2021 Nina Conference for episode 400. And it was, it was just amazing to be in there with all of you, sharing all of these stories and just having a good time. Again, thank you all for, for coming out, for the job that you do is the most vital piece of public safety. I know I say it all the time, and I probably sound like a broken record, but I mean it every single time. You're all amazing. So keep kicking ass and taking names and hold your heads up high because you do a job that not many people can do. A big shout out to Nina again for hosting the podcast in the Expo Hall and you know giving me the opportunity to do Imagine Listening uh, because I was able to capture these stories and, uh, and do episode 400 there in Columbus, Ohio. It was, it was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. And, um, this episode sponsored by Indigital as well as Rapid Deploy and to patrons, as always, thank you so, so very much. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, or you want to be a guest on the show, you can email us and that's going to be WTT podcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter. That is at nine one podcast. You can like us on Facebook. That is facebook.com slash within the trenches podcast. This can be seen on Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube and can be heard um, 24 seven on Apple podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, your favorite podcasting app. And just really quick for any bonus content. If you want to become a patron, check us out. Patreon.com slash WTT podcast. Um, there's more to come and I'm super excited to also soon let you in on a super secret project that I've been working on. Have a good one, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.